How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be using Blender 3.0 and Geometry Notes to create a really cool Plexus style animation. I did this a long time ago. Now that Geometry Notes is here, we have a more powerful and more flexible system to create a really cool Plexus style animation. Today's video is in partnership with Concept D. I'm currently using the Concept D 7 Pro for this tutorial. I really love the screen on this laptop. When it comes to designing, color accuracy is super important. The screen is Pantone validated and has 100% Adobe RGB color gamut. So that really helps us digital creators and the Pantone is really good for graphic designers or if you're doing print, making sure everything is super accurate. This computer is great for color accuracy. Even the display has also been tested and calibrated to achieve true to life color accuracy. So you're getting a really, really good screen. It's 15.6 inches and 4K. So you're getting something really, really great with this monitor here. So thank you Concept D for partnering with me here on this tutorial. Now let's get into how to create the effect. All right, so if you don't have Blender 3.0 now, you can access it. I'm gonna put it in the description from the daily builds section of the Blender website. It is a unreleased, unfinished version of Blender. I found it to be quite stable, especially for exactly what we're doing with it today. And there are some features with Blender 3.0 that you don't get in Geometry Notes that we need for today. So we're gonna be testing out some really cool, fun things. So, so you can download that linked in the description. And what you can do is once you have the zip file, unzip it, open it up, and then get the Blender application file and open it right up. So we're here in a blank document. We're gonna go ahead and delete everything. We're gonna click on the little camera icon, make sure you're in Eevee, and we're gonna put on these little check marks right here. That's really the only thing you need to do for render setup. So first, the first part of this tutorial is geometry notes. So I'm gonna hit S5, Control A, apply the scale. I'm gonna hit Tab, right click, subdivide. We're gonna subdivide it by 20. Now this particular subdivide number doesn't matter. We're gonna decimate it. We're really just trying to establish some, uh, some geometry here. Second, we're gonna get our particles. I'm calling them particles because that's kind of how I used to use this particular process. I'm subdividing the icosphere by four, hit G, and then I'm gonna also get a curve circle. Now this is the part that's especially not, uh, you can't, as far as I'm aware, could be wrong, but you cannot use curves and geometry nodes in any other version except 3.0 and maybe some earlier experimental builds. But the official one on the Blender website, you can't do that. So we're gonna go straight into geometry nodes. We're gonna collapse this window because we don't need it. I'm gonna click new. We're gonna get a point instance. We're gonna hit shift A and type in point instance. So P-O-I-N-T. -O we're gonna get our point instance, drop it right there. Click on geometry and we're gonna get the icosphere. So now we have all these icospheres. We need to be able to control the scale. So that's gonna be with a fill, attribute fill specifically. And then right here, we're gonna type in scale. That's what we wanna control. Bring it down to zero. So bring that value up just a little bit. Now we have a bunch of instance icosphere. So it's really nice. Now we need to make a new line of geometry to get those wires back in basically. So we're gonna go ahead and get in a join geometry node first. And this is similar in process to like a mix RGB. If you're doing shading, it's kind of mixing two different lines to have them speak to each other. So shift A, search mesh to curve, M-E-S-H-T-O, mesh to curve, plug geometry into mesh, and plug the curve into the geometry. So now we have our wires and faces back. Now we need to go ahead and mess with it a little bit more and kind of invert what we just did with a curve to mesh. So curve to mesh, and what that's gonna allow is these to be able to speak to themselves with a object info node. So get the object info and what that's gonna allow us to do is select our Bezier circle and plug geometry into profile curve. So what what we're gonna see here is the width of this circle is gonna be the width of our tubes and whatnot. So hit S and scale it really far down. I mean a lot, control A, apply scale. There we go. So now you can see it's really small right over here but needs to be a lot smaller. Just so hit S, bring it down, control A, apply scale. There we go. That is about the size that we want it to be. Here on the value, we're gonna give this 0 0.2, actually 
zero point zero two. There we go. So maybe too small now. So we'll just kind of play with it. A little bit different than when I originally did it. All right. So let's go ahead and bring that down to like four. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and further mess with this plane. We're going to go add a modifier and we're going to go and get a displacement modifier. Displacement right there and bring the displace in the hierarchy of our modifiers. Bring it up and then click new. Click on the little thing there. Image or movie. We're going to go to clouds. Depth down. Scale up. Let's go back and add an a decimate. So right here, decimate. And then I'm not sure why the decimate shows up at the bottom. It's kind of weird, but maybe I'm maybe I'm forgetting something. All right, so bring the ratio down till we have this, and then bring that strength up. And look at that. Prop, we have plexus. So let's go ahead and get an empty plane axis. Click back on this, and this is how we're going to animate the displacement. I've done this quite a few times here on the channel. So we're going to go here, local to object. Select that empty. So if you hit R twice while having the empty selected, we have animation. That's really cool. Now, let's go ahead into shading this and we'll move into animating it. So one really cool thing that you also don't get until you do with the 3.0 and maybe slightly earlier experimental builds is some color control. So here in the uh, material section, we're gonna click new, go here and add an emission, and we're gonna click the plus icon, go here, add an emission. So now we have material one, material two. Now, technically you can just click on the icosphere and give it its own material and it'll show up there, but you can't click on the Bezier circle and add a material. It won't work. So might as well just give control to everything in the geometry nodes, even though you can kind of do it the other way. I like to have some fun. So we're going to go back to the modifiers and we're going to click on geometry nodes so we can see it. And let's go ahead, hit G and add in our material control. So I'm going to click on the render button here and then shift a material. So we're going to do material assign, click that there. Right into here, we're going to click on material one. Now you can see now it's seeing it. I'm going to shift D, bring it there, and material two. So what pretty much how it works is whatever line you're putting it on, it's just assigning it to. So this one here is for the icosphere. So this is the material that the icosphere is going to have. So if you have that plane selected, material two, make it nice and bright. And then here on material one, you can make it a little bit brighter. Let's go ahead and get our colors going. So we'll give a blue right about there. And then we'll go click on this material and just eyeball it. Doesn't really matter. And then we'll need that to be considerably brighter. World, we'll bring that world down to black. Now we have a nice plexus animation. Next thing we need to do is add a little bit of subtle design into this to make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to hit shift A, get a plane. I'm going to hit R. X 90 enter and then I'm gonna go ahead and scale it pretty big control a apply that scale we're gonna add just some little procedural glitching patterns to add some more subtle design to this whole animation while we're here let's go ahead and shift D on this plane and bring it back I'll show you why we did that a little bit later but we do want to have it a little bit longer on the plexus so let's click here Go to shading and start designing our pattern. Collapse those windows. We're going to click new, bring it up. We're going to go here to the EV view. Let's go ahead and delete the principle. We're going to get a mix shader here. Plug the mix shader into the surface. We're going to go ahead and get an emission and a transparent. So emission goes on the bottom. Transparent goes to the other top. And then just plug them in like this. Let's go ahead, go up here, get a color ramp, plug it there, and then we're going to get a brick texture. So get our brick texture. I'm going to go ahead and get a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Texture coordinate, object into the vector, and vector into the vector, and plug the color into the color ramp. And then bring your scale down to one for now. We'll, we'll kind of play with that later. So mortar smoothness down to zero and mortar size pretty small. So now that we have that, we can bring our scale down some more. You can even play with your brick width, brick length, brick width, all that fun stuff is controllable here. We need to kind of distort it with a 
Voronoi texture so that it kind of glitches around. We're going to get a VOR Voronoi texture, plop it right there. We're going to go here to Manhattan. And then, you've probably seen me do this about a thousand times here on the channel, get our mix RGB so we can bypass this Voronoi so that it only affects it a little bit. So bring that factor back, something like this. Maybe bring the scale over. And then do something like this. So if we switch this here to 4D when we go to animate this, we're animating that pattern. Might as well, while we're at it, animate the pattern. So we'll go ahead and bring up a timeline. And let's go ahead and animate this very quickly. Let's go to preferences and make sure that our keyframe interpolation is on linear. And then we'll go right click on the W, insert keyframe, go to the very end, kind of make it animate however much you want, insert keyframe. So now that we have this, we do need it in, now we need to enable some transparency here. So we'll go down here to the uh, material right here in the settings. We'll go here to alpha blend. Now we can see everything back. We'll go ahead and change this color right here to be what we're looking for. Now we'll kind of, we'll kind of have our camera there. So let's go ahead and bring that scale in a little bit. And what we're going to do is first let's kind of remove some of these glitches, something like this, maybe even bring up the scale a little bit. And then what we're going to do is just take this white portion and bring it down so it's a little more transparent and a lot more subtle. And then you can bring up the emission strength a little bit and then play with that subtlety. So if you bring it all the way down, it's zero. So kind of play with this color till you like the subtlety of the animation of what we're kind of playing with here. And now we have that. Let's go here. I'm going to go ahead and collapse our timeline. We don't need to animate any more textures. We're going to go here, object to world. We're going to add some volume to our world. Notice how I had duplicated. That's what we're going to do here. So we want to have sort of a fading into the back effect. Shift A, we're going to get a volume. A volume, principled volume here. Volume there. And then now everything's going to kind of disappear. So bring that density back. And then kind of incorporate that density till you can see it nicely kind of fading back into the distance. So it's faded back here, nice here, and that's how you get a really cool, nice effect. And so far, we have a really cool, really nice looking plexus effect. And here on my end on the screen, this color accuracy and the brightness of this screen is just making this look so beautiful and so nice. Let's go ahead and get the empty here, animate the empty. So bring a timeline up, we'll go to the back. And if you want this to loop, you can. So you would just loop it here, the empty on a uh, any axis. I'm not really worried about looping here, just to show you guys how this looks animated. I'm gonna go here, click this on the rotation, go to the end, and let's do something like that. Press play. And now we have a nice plexus animation. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the tilde key, click front, I'm gonna hit my camera, and then, um, I'm going to go ahead and bring my camera all the way back, go back to the render view, and then I'm going to go zoom out some more, click on the plane, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring that displacement up a little bit more and bring my decimation down so there's not quite so many faces. And then here we go. We now have created a really cool really nice plexus background animation in my original animation i added some text you can do that if you want to make a really cool text intro style or make a nice looping background for your computer anything you want you can have some fun here thank you concept d for partnering with me helping me support the channel helping me do what i love if you'd like to check out the concept d7 pro you can hit the link in the description check out all the links there thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial